Tonight, a smartphone that can map everything around you in 3D. Mount Gox has a mountain of Bitcoin problems to climb out of and some backstories behind the WhatsApp deal. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 28 for Thursday, February 20th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Scotty Vest, technology-enabled clothing to carry all of your gadgets. Visit scottyvest.com slash twit now through February 24th to save 40% off 14 of their bestsellers. That's scottyvest.com slash twit and use the code twit13 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right to the tech feed. Google's Project Tango is alive. It's an Android-based smartphone prototype and developer kit with advanced 3D sensors. The company describes it specifically as a 5-inch phone with hardware and software to track the full 3D motion of the device while simultaneously creating a map of the environment and make over a quarter million 3D measurements every second. Google hopes Project Tango will kick off next-gen indoor navigation, immersive gaming, and augmented reality. And prototype priority access goes to 200 developers who have proven they have a solid idea for the device. The rest of the prototypes will be delivered by March 14th. In other dev news, Google developer advocate for Android and identity, Tim Bray, has announced that he's leaving the company, citing irreconcilable differences over his refusal to relocate from Vancouver to Silicon Valley. So I guess Yahoo's not the only company that can't handle remote workers. Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox can't catch a break this week between rumors of a company relocation and a requirement for users to hold verified accounts to withdraw Bitcoins. It's not clear when the account policy changed, but the verifying your account section of the website now says all Mt. Gox user accounts are required to be verified in order to perform any deposits or withdrawals. The process requires a photo ID and proof of residence, and some customers have reported waits of several months for verification. As for the office move, Mt. Gox posted a notice on their user support page pointing to a new address in the Shibuya district of Tokyo, Japan, possibly to avoid protesters that have staged themselves near the building's front door. Mt. Gox's Bitcoin exchange rate is in a free fall, hovering right about $111 on the exchange, a low not seen since back in October following the shutdown of black marketplace Silk Road. In more stable global news, Simple, the online bank startup building an alternative to traditional banking, announced today it's being acquired by Banco Bilbao Vizcaya Argentaria. I practiced that for a while. Spain's second largest bank for $117 million in cash. Simple will continue to operate independently alongside BBVA's other U.S. operations. Simple founder and CEO Joshua Reich remains in his role. It's been a good week for food. Sources tell the Wall Street Journal that Grubhub Seamless, the online restaurant menu and takeout ordering service, has made a confidential filing for an initial public offering. Company officials have met with investment banks and an IPO could happen as early as the first half of the year. This follows news from earlier this week that mobile courier service, most known for food delivery, Postmates, closed a new financing round and passed 10,000 deliveries per week in New York and San Francisco, its cities of operation. Well, coming up, self-driving cars might be a few years away. We'll show you what one of these vehicles of the future might look like inside. And up next is Jill Duffy from PCMag.com to get inside some of the backstories in the WhatsApp acquisition by Facebook. But first, let's take a moment to thank Scotty Vest for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Scotty Vest makes high-quality clothing for men and women. And when I say women, I mean that I'm wearing one right now and none of the men in the office had any idea. They kept telling me to put my Scotty vest on because this stuff is fashionable. You got tons of pockets. It makes carrying and using your gadgets easy and comfortable and discreet. And this particular model it doesn't really hide anything necessarily. You just can't get at it because it's like a secret pocket. You've also got clothes that are a little bit more engineered for the outdoors with technology in mind. It's got a patented system to keep wires under control. I mean, there are hidden pockets left and right in here. Perfect for battery packs to keep your gear charged during the day. Good wiring for your headphones if you're at the gym or on a run outside. Hidden pockets keep all of your cash and gadgets and important documents safe. Think passport when you're traveling. You don't want to wear that in your pocket. You don't want to put that stash it in the back of your jeans. 
In celebration of its 13th anniversary, Scotty Vest is offering 40% off 14 of their best-selling items, including men's and women's trenches, new puffer jackets, Flea 7.0, the cardigan like the one I'm wearing, bamboo polos, performance t-shirts, and convertible travel pants that can change from pants to shorts. Visit scottyvest.com slash twit to check out these great products that you can buy for 40% off during the sale. And be sure to use the promo code TWIT13 at checkout. That's TWIT13 for Scotty Vest's 13th anniversary. You have until 9 p.m. Mountain Time on February 24th to take advantage of this sale. So do it now. If you're hearing this late, check them out anyhow because they, f they feature daily sale items for 20% off. That's scottevest.com slash twit and use that code twit13 at checkout. Thanks to Scotty Vest for their support of twit and keeping me warm. All right, joining us now is Jill Duffy, writer at pcmag.com and author of Get Organized, How to Clean Up Your Messy Digital Life. Hello, Jill. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, so about a just over a, a day ago, uh, we heard that Facebook acquired WhatsApp. And since then, besides the staggering 19 billion number that everyone is still trying to absorb, the backstory sounds pretty dramatic. What, yeah, what, what's, what's that? What's interesting about these two co-founders? Well, the, I mean, the, the real backstory is the story of how the app was made. Um, and it's kind of this rags to riches American dream idea. Um, a young guy named Jan Kuhn was a uh, an immigrant from Ukraine and came over to California, uh, struggled, you know, came from, from very poor beginnings and eventually met his co-founder where they worked together at Yahoo, developed this app. Um, they worked really hard on it. The incredible amount of work went, work went into WhatsApp. And over the years, it has grown to be an explosive app for cross-platform messaging, really internationally. Um, it's People have said it's not super well known in the United States. I would actually refute that. I mean, I feel like everybody I know has friends overseas and uses WhatsApp to talk to them. Um, so that explosive growth, it sounds like, is one of the things that caught Facebook's attention. Yeah, there's a story that uh, Jan Kuhn, obviously one of the co-founders, actually signed the the historic detail, uh, de deal for the company at a former welfare office that he used to visit, which just shows how far he and the company has come. Yeah, I thought that was really sweet. Um, there were also reports that he had some early discussions with Zuckerberg, and then when he was ready to finalize the deal, actually went to his house on Valentine's Day night, uh -huh. um, you know, interrupted the dinner that, that Zuckerberg was having with his wife, and um, they shared a plate of chocolate-covered strawberries, which I thought was cute. But in the end, I mean, they inked the deal, so there you go. It's quite a match made in heaven, for sure. Uh, so, all right, let's talk a little bit about Google. Uh, we hear, we, we, we've heard quite a few numbers today. Originally that Google had wanted WhatsApp for itself. Uh, we heard a, that a yeah. $10 billion number had been thrown out. And then it sounded like they came back. They wanted to outbid Facebook uh, completely and, uh, and were denied. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't say exactly what was going on behind the scenes. I don't know. But my, my thought would be, that WhatsApp is more in line with um, social networking than it is with Google's whatever Google is anymore. I mean, Google was search. Google is still search. But I think a lot of times Google isn't sure what it's going to be. It puts its fingers in many different pies, and some of them fail. Um, certainly, there's been a lot of debate about Google Plus and whether it's been good. Google launches products and shuts them down all the time, um, whereas Facebook has been fairly consistent in being a social network. I mean, even its acquisition of Instagram, which was also huge, big number there, um, is in line with the idea of social networking and reaching people who are maybe in a different um, genre or subgenre of the social networking arena. So I think WhatsApp was really a better fit for Facebook in a lot of ways. And I'm curious to see how Facebook is going to handle its properties. In some ways, it reminds me of Amazon, which is another company that has gone out with aggressive acquisitions, become retail for just everything, and then very quietly behind the scenes, without changing the branding, without changing too much about the user interface, has Amazonified everything that goes on behind the scenes. So I wonder if Facebook is going to do that with some of its social networking properties, WhatsApp included. Do you think, you mentioned that it, uh, WhatsApp just seems like a better fit for Facebook than it does for Google, but wouldn't that put WhatsApp in a better position to negotiate if Google wanted it that badly? 
Maybe. I mean, I don't know what happens to people when you start throwing out numbers like 19 billion. <laughs> it starts to sound the same a little bit after about yeah. 10. Yeah. I mean, at some point, you've got to think about what's going to be right for your company. What do you want the future of this product that you created, that you poured years of your life into making? What do you want it to be? And who's going to help you make it be that thing that you want it to be? So I think, you know, money, money is certainly... Uh, has something to say here, but um, we don't know what else was, was on the table. Real quick, do you think $19 billion makes sense for WhatsApp? Do you think it's that, uh, do you think it's that important for Facebook? Well, I think that we can't judge these new world acquisitions in the lens of old world business. I mean, we're talking now about people being the assets, phone numbers being the assets, information being the asset. We're not talking about just a company and the revenue that it makes anymore. So we don't know what $19 billion buys you at this point. I think this is a whole new world and we've got to think, we've got to look at it that way. Um, I think probably over a number of years that WhatsApp will get Facebook to where it wants to be in terms of its goals, in terms of keeping um, young users engaged and um, international users engaged. So. I think it, it is a good portfolio fit and the money, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say. We haven't had a lot of precedents yet on that. Yes, we certainly haven't. Well, Jill Duffy, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we can find your work obviously at pcmag.com. Uh, anywhere else people can find you online? I'm on Twitter at Jill E. Duffy. Jill E. Duffy. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Please come again soon. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. All right. Finally, let's file this one under want. Ahead of the 2014 Geneva Motor Show, Swiss company Rinspeed has presented the Exchange E, which isn't a Bitcoin exchange at all. It sounds a little bit like it. It's an automotive study to demonstrate how cars will be used as transportation in the future with an all-electric autonomous touring sedan, which the company has actually modeled after a Tesla Model S. At least the exterior looks that way. The interior looks more like a business class seat on an airplane rather than a sedan. The seats adjust, they tilt, they swivel. For a combination of 20 possible seating arrangements, there's a futuristic steering wheel that includes hands-on recognition, a drive mode manager display in the upper rim, transparent multifunction keys with ambient lighting. I could go on and on. It's like a modern jet aircraft. Rinspeed has dubbed it an office and living room on wheels. And I, for one, cannot wait. A quick heads up that next week, the Twit Network will host a ton of live coverage on Mobile World Congress happening in Barcelona. Monday, following Tech News Today at 11 a.m. Pacific, watch Samsung Unpacked 5. We'll also have announcements from Nokia and others, so do be sure to watch our continuing coverage throughout the day on our stream at live.twit.tv. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Do subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us with feedback at tn2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lee. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.